Um, now, we're all aware of just how expensive it has become to rent accommodation, particularly in the Dublin area, and indeed to find suitable premises to rent. But a major study of Dublin's rental market carried out by Savills shows just how significant and challenging this market has become in the city. And the report's author and Savills Director of Research, Dr John McCartney, joins us now. John, an incredible increase in the number of people renting in the Greater Dublin area over the last five years. Indeed, Vincent, yeah. Uh, I mean, altogether uh, in Ireland now, uh, we have about 860,000 people renting and of those, about 330,000 are in Dublin. Uh, that's an increase of about 108,000 compared with where we were five years ago. So there's almost 50% more people renting in Dublin today than was the case five years ago. And, and where are they going? Because there's this perception out there that, that you know, we know there's a, a supply problem, but there's a perception out there that, that um, there's always been no increase in the accommodation base over that period. Y- yeah, well... Um, I, I think what, what we're seeing is that the supply side of the rented sector has actually increased quite sharply. In Dublin today, there's about 43,000 more rental units uh, than there were uh, five years ago in the system. So the, the, the That wouldn't the, be the general perception, I think, would it? Well, I think that's right. I mean, we've heard, um, we've heard you know, misinformation out there about, you know, uh, the size of the private rented sector shrinking and, the, you know, landlords fleeing the market. In net terms, that is not the case. It's absolutely clear uh, that the number of landlords, the number of properties in the sector has increased and uh, increased pretty strongly um, over over the last number of years. And that's exactly what you would expect because with rents now so high and rising rapidly, um, the returns that are available on uh, residential property investment compared with the money that you can get from from investing in in a bond or or sticking your money in the bank, it, it, it's much it's much better. So it's attractive to landlords as long as they're not too heavily geared. So is one of the key outputs of this detailed research you've done is that that while the supply of rental accommodation in the city has increased for all the economic reasons you've pointed out there. It's just not keeping up with demand. That is really it. And is that population growth or is that just changes in lifestyle? It's a combination of things. I mean, Dublin's population is now growing by about 1.7% per annum. So this is the second fastest rate of population growth we've ever really experienced uh, in in the city. So so that is a huge factor. Last year we had, uh, in the last 12 months, we've had 17,600 new households forming in Dublin and we've only built 3,500 residential units to put them in. So that's a fundamental problem. But there's also within this a big tenure shift from owner occupation to renting and the the reasons for that are obvious. House prices are rising so fewer people can afford them. Incomes have been fairly sluggish and of course we know that some people are still suffering residual damage to the household balance sheet from the recession, you know, and that's making it harder to afford housing and of course the mortgage rules are contributing to that as well. And the fact that those people who are attracted, attracted to get into the uh, the buy to let market, there's a lot of people with cash out there. Fifty percent of those buying residential units. Well, a- absolutely. There's 95 billion euro of cash on deposit in the Irish banks, excluding the post office. So there's no shortage uh, of cash um, out, out there. And as I say, when banking deposits are, are yielding a return of less than one percent, and you can get an income yield on residential property of 5, 6, 7% in most locations across Dublin. That's before we even consider the capital appreciation. If you have the cash and the temperament for it, it's a good investment. Not everybody will have the cash because, of course, um, you know, the the investments are pretty lumpy in the sense that, you know, if you had €400,000, you might have to put in more than half of your cash and it limits diversification. But for people with a lot of cash, uh, it, it, it's clearly an attractive investment. And your research has shown that this is an extremely tight market, a vacancy ratio of about 1.5%. Absolutely, that is the case. Uh, the the vacancy level is now razor thin, and um, I mean this creates uh, two immediate problems for for anybody in the market looking to rent. Firstly, uh, there's an absolute problem of trying to find somewhere to 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 live. That is just a real serious issue. And the other thing, of course, is that when you get a low vacancy rate, you almost inevitably get strong rental growth, and that's what we're seeing. And we've developed a forecasting model 
which really is based on the, the long-term mathematical relationship between the vacancy rate and rental growth and it shows that... And, rent- and for those who are who are consigned to renting for some time, this is not good news, what, what this shows. I'm, I'm afraid not. It looks as if, you know, we're going to see further compounding rental growth of, of we believe, about 24% over the next two and a half years. So an average, an average of ten or eleven percent, or up to twelve percent over two years. Egg, exactly, something in the order of nine, ten, eleven percent per annum. So a continuation of the run rate that we've already seen. What's going to? What's going, is there any solution to this in the short term? We saw the minister, I suppose, ex- expanding the uh, the the tax allowance system for 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 would be landlords to get into older buildings. The Living City Initiative can that can that address that kind of issue in the short term? Well, I think it's a smart move and it's an an imaginative scheme and at the margin it probably will help. But I think that the returns on residential property investment have been so good now for such a long time uh, that any buildings that would have been easy to activate and, and, and bring back into the supply chain have probably already been 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 utilized by investors so um I, I you know i think i think it'll help at the margin but ultimately the solution here is to build more properties and unfortunately that's a medium term objective and to build more properties and perhaps in 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 in, in urban areas to to build uh, to build upwards and and higher quality a- a- absolutely, yeah. I-, I think there is also an argument for a unique or a specific planning designation for build to rent property to, you know, to, to sort of facilitate that and to reduce the costs of developing uh, residential blocks that are designed to be always held uh, by an investor. So I, I think there, there are things that we can do around the edges, but fundamentally this is going to take time to resolve. And a bit more pain in, ter- in people's pockets. Dr. John McCartney of Savills, thanks indeed for joining us. Coming up, Rory Gillen on Sterling and Markets. Stay with us. Breakfast Business, brought to you by Grant Thornton, the auto-